Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers search warrants, officer privilege, and departmental corruption, and is brought to us by Fire and Police Videos' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Let's dive right in and audit the interaction. On the evening of March 22, 2020, Española, New Mexico resident Philip Chacon barricaded himself into his home after the Española Police Department attempted to make contact with him regarding a stabbing incident which occurred earlier that day. The Española PD surrounded the house and began issuing orders for Mr. Chacon to surrender peacefully. Shortly after the incident began, Rio Arriba Sheriff James Lujan arrived on the scene in plain clothes and attempted to order the Española City Police officers to leave the scene. So you're in charge? Yeah, yes. Bring who in? Phil Chacon. That's who you have a warrant for? Right. Pull everybody out. I'll bring them in. I don't want to pull them out. Huh? I don't want to pull them back. Excuse me? I'm not asking. I'm telling you. I will bring him in. Okay? We don't need to make this bigger than what it is. Hey, uh, the sheriff just pulled in. And he's he's asking us to pull back, and he'll pull him in. But he's been drinking. I can smell it on him. We're going to need somebody. Huh? Yeah. And we need to pull somebody over here, somebody above me, because he's he's already pushing his weight around with me. So, okay. We're not pulling back. Hi. I'm waiting for, I told Jeremy. Jeremy's calling command one now. Uh, but do you smell it, or am I the only one that smells yeah. it? Yeah. Please do something about okay. it. Right. Mr. Chacon eventually surrendered to the officers and was taken into custody. During the standoff, Sheriff Lujan revealed to the Española officers that he had been communicating with Mr. Chacon while he was inside the home, and briefly attempted to convince the officers that Mr. Chacon was not actually in the house. Sheriff Lujan's strange behavior and unwelcome appearance garnered suspicion from the Española Police Department, and culminated in the department filing official charges against Sheriff Lujan, and securing search warrants for both the sheriff's personal cell phone and the phone issued to him by the sheriff's office. On the morning of May 14th, the Española PD attempted to serve those warrants at the Rio Arriba Sheriff's Office. Sheriff, how are you? Good, yeah. Good. Is James here? The sheriff? We need to sneak this yeah. Hold on. Hold on. At this point, Sheriff Lujan has officially been served the search warrants and must comply with the orders of the judge immediately. The search warrant authorizes officers to search the sheriff for the phones, and as of this moment, the phones are in the sheriff's pocket, which means that he was served the warrant while in possession of the phones. However, Sheriff Lujan attempts to circumvent the authority of the warrants by handing his phones to his colleague, Under Sheriff Martin Trujillo. Somewhere, yeah. Clovis, somewhere. Clovis, and then uh, Pat Casado signed off on it. Mmm. Well, he has my personal phone and my work phone. Okay. Okay, so it's going to stay there until I get it cleared to my attorney first. Fair enough. 
The sheriff informs the officers that he will not surrender the phones until he has spoken with his attorney. While all Americans are entitled to due process under the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments, disputing the legitimacy of a search warrant as it is being served does not fall within the scope of those protections. If a defendant wishes to challenge the validity of a search warrant, they must do so in a court of law, not on the street. And the fact that the Española officers allowed the sheriff to call his attorney and wander around the office freely after serving the warrants is a testament to the privilege that officers offer and afford one another when performing their duties. In a country where departments are authorized to execute no-knock raids daily, seize millions of dollars of contraband, and intercept sensitive personal information all in the name of justice, it is highly irregular for officers to allow a suspect to comply with a warrant on their own terms. It doesn't have the case number on here for the original... That's a PD case number. It doesn't have a magistrate or a district case. This is in district court, too, and this is a magistrate warrant. Okay? This case is already in district court. This is a magistrate warrant. You, you understand that this case well, okay. this case is in district court, right? Okay. Did you get a district court judge to approve it? District court judges don't do search warrants anymore. They just don't. They put, they put them all down to magistrate. Did you know that? I didn't know that. They just don't do them. Okay. In the 1971 Supreme Court case of Coolidge versus Hampshire, the court held that a warrant must be issued by a neutral and detached judge capable of determining whether probable cause exists. Whether the warrant was signed by the circuit judge or a magistrate is irrelevant. To obtain a warrant, law enforcement officers must show that there is probable cause to believe a search is justified. Officers must support this showing with sworn statements and must describe in particularity the place they will search and the items they will seize. The search warrant that the Española officers are attempting to serve specifically targets Sheriff Lujan's work phone and the personal phone that he was using to communicate with Mr. Chacon during the March 22nd standoff. Keep this in mind, because it will play an important role later in this episode. What is it exactly are you looking for? So it stipulates in there. Okay. Um, let me uh, send this to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. You have three units out there? Mm -hmm. what? So. Yeah. You have all your units here, so. I have all my units here. That's what we were told. Who do you see here? The under sheriff, myself, the transport deputy. No, Leon's doing report. And so okay. what? What are you Sounds good. saying? I'm going to do something? Well, we don't know. You don't know? Really, Ernest? I don't. Really? Fortunately. Sure. Wow. Okay. Well, then but, you're going to stand outside of my office. I'm going in here. That's really, really, so really right. bad, Ernest. Sure. So. Uh, under Sheriff Trujillo walks away with the phones, and the Española officers inform the deputies that they need to be able to see the phones in case the sheriff attempts to delete anything. The sheriff and undersheriff eventually return to the front of the office, but continue to wander aimlessly in and out of the view of the officers. Shortly thereafter, Española Interim Police Chief Roger Jimenez arrives on the scene to speak with Sheriff Lujan. They're signed, they're legal, it's a court order. I know, I know you guys are just doing your job, but I don't want you guys in the middle of this. All we need are the phones, that's it. Well, I'll take it as advice from his attorney, we'll do that. I got him. I don't know. You have your phone, his phones? Yes. Okay. Can I see him at least so I could give you that professional courtesy? Okay. I think it can have you guys leave. I mean, we're making more of a show than anything you could. Nothing just happened. Well, I'm not the one making the show. I had only sent these guys in here. You know, I, I just, again, we want the phone. Well, that's but, fine. You're, right. you're probably going to get the phone, but wait until you get the phone. Well, as you know, Under Sheriff, it's not probably. There's a court order. 
You know, I don't want to, I, I really don't. I don't want to have to put anybody in cuffs. I don't. But if if that's what I have to do, then I will do it. I don't want to do that. And you're saying who? Cool. Him. Oh. All right. I talked to him. I got you on the phone. Okay. I have the copy of the search warrant. Somebody has here. Was, I gave him copies. Where are they? What's that? The warrant? You asked for them? Or did you? No, he gave them to me. Okay. Search me. Are you going to comply, yes or no? That's okay. all I want. You I want the phones. That's it. I told you. You have your search warrant says to search me for personal phones? He has the phones. He already told me he has the phones. Okay. That's so, not what the search warrant says, does it? Okay, so you want us to lock down the sheriff's office? Go ahead and call them back. You're going to stay out here, sir. Stay out here. For what? Because... Under sheriff? You can go through the court system. Sorry, we are. We're going to lock down this building until he gives me those spoons. Really? Yes, that's what the DA's office is. Really? Yeah. Where's that on paper? You can call her. Andrea Reed. Do you want her number? He's going out. You're not going to stop me from leaving if I want to leave. Am I under arrest? If we have to. Am I under arrest? Not, not, not now. Get away from not me. Not now. Go back inside. We're going to lock down the office. Please, go back in the office. Seriously. Don't. Back up. You back can up. go in the office, but... Back up. Bro, don't, touch. don't reach. Back up. Go inside. Because you're not certified, so... Back up. This slight physical altercation demonstrates that the deputies prioritize their loyalty to the sheriff above their sworn duty to uphold the law. The Española officers followed the proper protocol and served a legitimate search warrant to the sheriff. The Rio Arriba deputies are bound by the same oath to uphold the law as it is dictated by their respective justice system as every other member of law enforcement. Their failure to uphold the search warrant raises serious questions about their competence as a department and reveals a glaring gap between their ability to perform their duties according to the law and the ethical standards associated with law enforcement as a whole. So are you refusing? Is that what you're saying? Refusing Sheriff, what? You're refusing a lawful order? So you're still in the back. From the judge. What judge? Judge Casalvis. On what case no. is that on? On my case. You have the search warrant. On your case? Yeah. yeah. You have the search warrant. You search, have the search warrant. The, the case you is continue, going to district court, right? You continue to continue it's to continue district court to judge resist and obstruct. Case, right? You're showing a pattern of behavior, sure. Really? Yes. It's a pattern of harassment. I read twice. I read it twice. Retaliation twice. and harassment is what it is. Twice. That's okay. You have your, you have your opportunity in court. I'm, I'm here asking. So will you on a misdemeanor. Okay, for now. For now. I've done For nothing. now. Are you then, accusing then me of not, something else? Then why not give me the phones? I told you I'm seeking legal counsel first. I have you that have, right. Do I not have a right to seek legal counsel? You have a legal, legal order. You have I a legal do. order. And it doesn't say how long I have to give it to you, does it? It says now. Does yes, it? Yes. Show me. It's a court order. You have the copies. It says now? Yeah. Well, when do you, okay, so you get a search warrant. You just do it whenever you want. Sheriff, it would just be so much easier if you just give us these phones. And I don't have the phones, do I? Well, no, but you, we, I saw you give them to your undersheriff mm -hmm. who has them in his pocket. Mm -hmm. So just the knowledge of that. Give him the phones. This is all harassment and retaliation because I told the city council that you shouldn't be the chief. You That's what it is. think whatever you want. I don't think, sheriff. I know. Okay. That's exactly what it is. You do, you Go ahead and give it to him. These phones are not to be gone through until you have a warrant for the content. You only have a warrant for the phones, You're not the content. Right. You're absolutely right. And good luck, absolutely. and you better not come through a magistrate. You better go through a district court judge. Thank you, Undersheriff. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. After acquiring the phones, the Española officers left the scene without further incident. The officers secured a search warrant for the contents of the phone a few days later, and discovered that Sheriff Lujan did not surrender the correct phone to the officers. The search warrant specifically named the phone that the sheriff had used to communicate with Mr. Chacon, but neither of the phones that the sheriff gave to the officers were the one he had used on March 22nd. Upon realizing that the sheriff failed to comply with the stipulations of the search warrants, an arrest warrant was issued, and on May 21st, the Española 
Nashville Police Department arrested Sheriff Lujan at his office. During the arrest, the sheriff managed to get a resisting charge stacked on top of the other charges he was already facing. Overall, Sheriff Lujan and the Rio Arriba Sheriff's Office get an F for failing to comply with the language of the search warrants, escalating a lawful interaction into a passive-aggressive standoff, and actively working to shield the sheriff from the authority of a court order. The blind loyalty of the deputies sheds light on the gang-like operations of certain police departments across the country, and officers who operate under the best interest of their department at the expense of properly enforcing the law are a danger to their communities. If the sheriff's actions are any indication of his guilt, then there is no doubt that he will be prosecuted for his crimes. It will be interesting to see what, if any, information is gathered from the cell phone that the sheriff went through so much trouble to hide, and there is a good possibility that the sheriff could face more charges in the future. Throughout the interaction, the sheriff mentions that the search warrants were issued in retaliation for comments that he had made about the interim police chief, but I was unable to substantiate those claims, and the sheriff's office could not be reached for comments. The Española Police Department gets a C- for offering the sheriff privileges that they do not grant to average citizens by allowing the sheriff and deputies to wander aimlessly through the building while executing a search warrant, and not arresting the sheriff after he made several attempts to evade complying with the court order. By extending a professional courtesy to Sheriff Lujan, the Española officers afforded him ample time to deceive the officers and attempt to make a getaway in the middle of the interaction. Any civilian who attempted to evade a search warrant by leaving the scene or passing off evidence to a colleague would have been arrested on the spot. And this encounter draws many parallels to an interaction I have covered in the past involving the arrest of attorney Victor Revel for defying the authority of a search warrant in central Alabama. I will post a link to that episode in the info card above. Regardless of any professional titles, all Americans are equally subject to the laws of this country. But the Española Police Department provided Sheriff Lujan with a degree of leniency that is not consistent with the standard protocols administered during most interactions with average citizens. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss us in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.